Welcome back. You're in the Settleline Designs shop. My name's Cole, and today we need to build a fuel tank for my custom snowcat build. I'm going to be changing gears and getting to work on the powertrain shortly. You can see some of those videos coming up in the near future on my channel at Centerline Designs. But today we're going to be building a fuel tank. That's what we're focusing on. So let me show you a drawing and I'll uh, explain what I'm doing. All right, here's the fuel tank we're looking to build today. Is that clear as mud? This would be the view of at the back of the vehicle looking forward. It's going to have a slight jog in the bottom of the fuel tank to account some of the components that are already there. The fuel lines are going to pull off this chamfer in the bottom here and go inside the engine bay. Uh, I have some approximate dimensions. Uh, the other dimensions here will reveal themselves once I start laying it out. This is a side view of the tank. We have a sending unit that's going to be dropping down to give us our level gauge with also a vent. I'm going to have a chamfer on the back of the tank here where the filonet goes in just to help pour jerry cans of gas in a little easier or diesel, sorry, fuel. So yeah, I'll start laying this out. It's all going to start to make a little more sense once I uh, get some pieces cut. I think my marker is drying up. Okay. I'm going to rip two strips of 14 inch wide and then start marking every, all the other cuts on them and we'll keep going. I know this probably isn't making much sense yet, but it will, trust me. We have our left side and our right hand side of the fuel tank cut out. We have what will be the top, the chamfer, and the back of the fuel tank right here, it's all going to be one piece of material. We're going to put some bends in it. And, uh, and then after that, I will mark and make sure we cut out to fit what we bent. And now I'm just working on the bottom of the tank. It's going to have an offset in it. So let's mark that out and we'll get it bent and cut it to fit. Inch, that accounts for about an inch and a half. So... 15 and a half and then once the bending's done we'll just cut it down to fit Okay, so I'm going to take this over, get this cut to a rough length. Once we have the bending done. Hey, buddy. Are you coming to help me build a fuel tank? Yep. Okay. Well, do you want to sit here and listen to what I have to say? Maybe someone will listen. That's what? Welcome, everyone. I have my little helper here with me, my son, Carter. Well, I'm going to go ahead... Rough cut this to length. I'll do the final cut after I've done the bending, just in case I have a little inconsistency that shortens or lengthens the actual part. Um, and then we're going to go ahead, do some bending on the fancy diamond plate section. Got to put a little flare into it, eh, buddy? And then we'll uh, get to spark up this uh, brand new Yes Welder CT2050 I got. It's what we're going to use to do all the TIG welding. So far, I'm really liking it, and I can't wait to show you how it goes. So. Enough talking, eh? Let's get a few things done and then uh, I'll meet you back here. With the majority of these pieces cut out, I'm going to go ahead and deburr all these edges while they're still straight. It's just an easier time to do it. And it's a good process to do uh, prior to welding. Get rid of all these little bits and any kind of debris that maybe got pushed into the metal. And then uh, we'll do some wire brushing, wipe the uh, parts down with acetone. Um, but we'll do the bending before we wipe that down. I don't want to take my marks off. <laughs> All right. My uh, little helpers in the shop keep me entertained. So I have the, my bends laid out and the bender set up. So I'm going to go ahead and get some of these bent. All 
important thing here is to make sure I square it up nicely in this bender. Because if I don't, I'm going to pay for it. Excuse me. Yes. I hope you can see that. That is bang on 45. So let's get lucky twice. Not too shabby. Nice radiuses. Not even any cracking on the diamonds. It's perfect. Oh, yeah. So it's not absolutely bang on, but, you know, that's, that's what we're dealing with there. It can be easily pushed into place. So that'll be the top, the chamfer, and the back of the tank. Sides go there. A little bit of bling to it. Looks really good. I was just waiting to make this final cut until we had the part actually bent. We'll go ahead and cut that off. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same, mark out the passenger side, cut that off, and then we can get to actually bending the bottom of the tank that's going to have an offset bend in it. Well, it still might be a little hard to see here, but this is going to be what the tank kind of roughly looks like. This side will go here, and then this bottom is going to be in it, but the bottom is going to have a jog to allow for the fuel barb fittings to enter into the tank and I'll have a piece of heavier aluminum welded in here that's drilled and tapped to a 3 8 NPT. Uh, we'll have a fuel supply and a return line. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's get the offset bent in this piece and then we need to mark the notches we need to cut in the back and the front of the tank. And then this part will look like it fits appropriately once it's notched. And then this bottom, we did leave a little long, uh, just so any discrepancy I have in my bends doesn't wind up with, you know, just a slightly too short of part. So I gave myself a little extra length because it's really easy to go and just cut off half an inch at the end. Um, yeah, let's do some bending. Now, this is the bottom that's going to go inside there. So we're going to have to do some notching on the front and the back. And then, as I said before, I left this long, so then I'll trim this to fit. So, let's go ahead and do that. Notch that on the bandsaw. So with the majority of the pieces uh, cut out, deburred, bent, fit, they're all trimmed. Everything looks like it's going to come together nicely. Before we go ahead and start 
tacking everything together. I'm going to get the holes cut out. I have a, a nice billet aluminum filler neck here that's a weld on. I need to mark exactly where I'm going to put that, get the hole cut out, deburred, weld it in. I'm going to weld the outside and the inside just to clean it up really nicely. And then we have another I have another piece I need to put in. This is the sending unit for the fuel tank. So we're going to cut this in through the top. Need a hole big enough to get the float through. And what I'm planning on doing here is just taking a piece of probably quarter inch plate. I'll trim out something nicely, put the hole in there. We'll mark and thread the holes into that thicker plate. And then I'm also going to tap a small NPT hole for a fuel tank vent. Pretty much everything's done. Last thing here is to get this marked out on here and just get these holes pre-drilled. Might as well center it. I'm just gonna hit those with the step bit. Open them right up. Work perfectly. We're almost there to get welding. I'm gonna get this area cleaned up again because I've been working in a bit of a mess and I hate a mess. And I'll meet you back here. Something most people probably won't spend the time to do, but look at that. Always clean your rods. It will really just help your result. And the other thing we're gonna do is just wipe our part down. And don't forget to wire brush. I even like giving it a little wipe after I wire brush too. So all that little bit of impurities, it's in the rag. Okay, the moment we've been waiting for. We have the welder on. Today we're using the Yes Welder First Disc CT2050 to do our, all of our AC tigging. It's a great machine. I have a review on my channel. Check it out, Centerline Designs. Uh, we have it set up for AC TIG with the foot pedal at 160 amps, so let's get welding. Okay, I just turned the welder up a little bit. I'm welding a piece of 3 8 to a piece of 1 8 so there's a significant thickness difference there. However, this piece of 3 8 really isn't that large in terms of mass. But it's always nice uh, in a situation like this, I'm using the big thick steel table underneath to help be a heat sink for that thinner material to kind of let the temperature difference get closer between them and then you're just going to wind up with a little bit more consistent weld.
well, things have had some time to cool down now. We got that flange for the sending unit and the breather or the uh, vent tube. And then we also got the filler neck on, which is really nice. I'm happy with that. So what I've been waiting for is let's start assembling this thing. Finally, it'll look like something. Well, I didn't get it all done in one day. I, it was time to call it quits yesterday, so I'm back in here today. Um, I really don't have that much welding to get finished up, so we're gonna get to her, get finished up, and uh, pretty much call this done. I don't have all the fittings yet, or plugs, to water test this. I don't plan on pressure testing it. It's not gonna be a pressurized fuel tank. Um, it'll always be open to atmosphere, so, I will just leak check it with some water for 24 hours and uh, see what it does. But enough talking, let's get back to do some welding. I think it's completely welded. <clears throat> I know I only have two left. Okay, that seam. One, two, three, four corners. And all that. Look at that! Ha! Huh. That didn't take long at all. It's done! Well, I had very little left to do on that, I guess. I am really happy with how that turned out. Let's check it out on the machine. Well, that's a pretty sharp looking tank. I'm really happy with it. It's uh, not exactly where it's gonna be sitting, you know, when it's mounted to the machine, but it's pretty darn close. The reason for this jog is again, there's gonna be fuel fittings in there and strain relief connectors in there that the hoses go through. And that's gonna provide a weather tight seal around the hoses themselves. And I didn't want to cramp myself. Um, I wanted to be able to get in, push the hoses on, tighten up any kind of connectors. There's nothing more annoying than when you really struggle to actually get access to areas. So I'm really happy with that. Well, I am pretty much going to call that tank done. I hope you enjoy watching this build as much as I had doing it. You know, it worked out really well. It took me a little bit of time to think about how exactly I wanted it, but boy, did it uh, really just come together. I didn't have to do much fiddling. I always appreciate when that happens. If you like that content, uh, check out my channel at Centerline Designs for the rest of the Snowcat build. But we're going to have some more little projects like this coming out soon featuring the CT2050 that I got. So yeah, if you like that, stay tuned.